I expect people can see my screen, yeah? I cannot, but uh, I could refresh and that might help. Does anyone um, else see? Please do. Yeah, see it. Okay. Please continue. And I'll All right, it. very good. Um, I, I won't be uh, sharing my video today because I noticed that the quality um, of the presentation is suffering because of the, the video processing load. So um, forgive me for not being uh, on your screens. Um, Great. So what we're going to talk about is uh, a very interesting piece of machinery that we um, had to come up with to make sure that we have a very uh, performant and yet very secure solution for our um, document jailing. And that's um, what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about first the, the, the need uh, for such a mechanism. Uh, and then I'm going to go in, into some details on the technical level um, as to what really it took to, to get this whole thing um, working and working uh, properly and securely. Um, at the very end, I will leave some time for, for questions. Um, and um, well, let's, let's take a step back. Uh, and what I want to do is uh, make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, the architecture of online is such that every document um, is isolated, both in terms of the process it is running in, and also its file system um, is isolated. And this is roughly the, the, the big picture, right? There is a WSD, which is a daemon. Um, it is the uh, uh, client or external facing piece of um, 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 process that receives all the connections. And internally, it needs to figure out um, every client and which document they have access to or their client access. Behind the scenes, uh, for every document, we have a separate locate instance. And that instance is essentially loading all of the um, LibreOffice core libraries and, and the rest of it. Um, of course, uh, in, in our deployment, it's, it's typically the uh, um, collaborative office, um, but, but you, get, you get the picture. Um, Forkit at the bottom is um, the process that is responsible for doing these spawnings of processes in the background and indeed we do this proactively, meaning we, we create extra ones um, so that when a document, a new document is um, uh, uh, re requested to, to get loaded, we will have um, spare uh, processes and we will do this as fast as possible. So every process, uh, the locate on the far right, has a, um, a jail associated with it and that's the file system that it is um, it can see and it is the only file system that it, it should be able to recognize and access meaning it can't go outside of the limits of that particular file system um, that we give it so how do we do that um, I, I believe the previous talk actually um, touched upon this so chain group, um, is is the key um, um, system call that we do uh, and that's a, that's a, a core functionality support in Linux. And, and the way we do this is essentially um, we give it a path and we say, you know, from now on, this is the root um, of your file system, right? So anything above that is invisible. Um, anything within that is uh, essentially uh, what is available and what exists for that particular uh, process. And that's, that's the basic idea. Um, and once we do that process because this this chain group is obviously a privilege um, uh, call. Uh, we need to drop the, the these privilege capabilities. So the locate process essentially, um, once it is set up, um, it reduces its capabilities to the bare minimum so that it wouldn't um, have any liability. Uh, so that's a basic idea. Um, but to do that, we will obviously need to prepare this file system in advance, right? As I said, when you change root to a path, that path becomes your root. Um, so you need to have everything that um, any process expects to find, right? Um, and I, on, on the right, you can see that this is the template that we create, and it, it is called sysTemplate. Um, so that's a, the system template that becomes the jail root. Um, and you can see that we have device in it, we have etc. Um, and obviously the system libraries, even um, you know, user and, and 
bar as well. So we have everything that a process needs, and this is just a level one. Um, there are literally thousands of files in this directory, and this is created at installation time. Right? So this, this has to be um, set up uh, in advance at the time of installing um, and setting up um, online. And the idea is that we have um, a setup uh, script, LulWSD system template setup, which is responsible for creating this directory. And once it is created, um, it is used as a template to um, create the jails for every document, right? And besides this um, uh, main template, we also have um, LO template, which is LibreOffice installation. We don't need to copy it. It has its own directory, but what we need to do is we, we need to make it available um, inside of the jail itself. Um, and that is done in the LO directory, and you can see this in the screenshot on, uh, on the right that it is provisioned um, already. Um, and that's, that's, it's, it, that's going to be ultimately where it's going to um, uh, live within the jail. Um, the, the jail bootstrapping itself um, used to be done in a very simple fashion. You would essentially um, uh, logically want to copy the uh, systemplate and then within the systemplate you want to copy the um, LibreOffice installation files in the LO subdirectory. And all of that becomes your new jail and what you do is you change root to it um, and that's it. You have a dedicated file system for a given document. Once the document is done, all you need to do is essentially, um, you know, RMRF that directory, and it's it's gone. The problem with this is, is that it's it's not very fast, um, and that's that's the the um, the main challenge. It's not very flexible, and it's not very fast. If you do it, um, you know, in, in in the fashion of copying, obviously you can link the files. But that only works if, if you're on the same file system. So, so hard linking doesn't work mm -hmm. across file systems. So you, you have a lot of challenges like that, and, and I will go a little bit more into it. Um, one minor thing to add is that the jail directory itself on the real file system is a cryptographically um, secure random uh, string, right? So um, even if somebody can break um, you know, out of the jail, they cannot figure out where to find another document, right? It becomes, it becomes a, a, a challenge for them, and that is, that's the basic security idea. Um, so as I said, the problem with copying or linking thousands of files um, is that the performance is, is, is not amazing. Even on, an, on a fast SSD, you will see that you're spending uh, you know, a couple of hundred milliseconds in the best case scenario. That's pretty good, um, and it's a cost that, that you can live with, considering uh, that you're actually doing all these um, uh, preparation of the, the, um, the locate processes in the jails in advance, right? Um, so you always have a couple of spare processes that, that are ready to handle the next um, document load. So this is not a terrible cost until um, you realize that, you know, there are um, deployments that are done in containers, like Docker, for example. Um, in, in the Docker world, um, you have an abstraction layer that actually um, isolates the real system from the Docker image. And within the Docker image, if you try to um, link uh, thousands of files, you, you will see that it's painfully slow, as in tens or dozens of milliseconds per link. Um, it literally takes seconds um, to create any, you know, individual jail with all the files in it. Uh, that absolutely does not fly, right? You will time out, you will fail. Um, the, the user, in most cases, will give up and, and just walk away. I mean, if it's, if it's taking a minute um, to open a document, um, well, they're not going to think, um, uh, you know, very highly of, of the product, right? So, you know, these are very serious challenges. And what we needed is you know, a way um, to avoid all of these problems, uh, but at the same time, uh, even maybe improve the security of the system. And, and, and you'll see how we've achieved that, um, albeit at, at uh, great you know, technical challenges, but you know, not, nothing that wasn't 
uh, unsurmountable. So ultimately, um, you will see uh, a success story. So um, this is the, the basic, um, you know, situation as it was before um, going on this point mount idea. So what is point mount? Uh, mounting is a very uh, fundamental uh, part of uh, getting the file system set up. And uh, usually the way you would do this is you would mount a disk. And when you mount the disk, the uh, file system is either recognized or uh, specified. Uh, the file system, once it is recognized, uh, mount is responsible for making sure that it is available at a certain path in, in your um, uh, file system tree and everything works just fine. The case here is not one where we're trying to mount a new file system or a new drive, um, but we're, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to mount a single directory and we just want that directory to be available at a certain path and that would be the jail path. Uh, so that's the basic idea and bind is exactly um, the recipe for, for that need. You can um, bind any directory at any other location um, even across file systems, that, that works just fine, and, and, and you would imagine why that is, because that's actually what mount does, right? It, it mounts drives. So it does support um, the ability to do this across systems and, and drives and uh, even virtual mount points um, as necessary. Um, we, are, we, we, we only need to deal with two um, uh, syscalls, one is mount and the other one is, is new mount or new mount 2 um, with, the, um, op with the second option and we need to have the uh, sysadmin capability. So this is, this is something that we don't like to maintain, the sysadmin capability. Uh, so what we do is we have a dedicated process for this that has the sysadmin capability. So the loo mount process is the, the dedicated process for doing the mounting and unmounting, and that limits the um, you know elevated uh, or privileged um, capability exposure to that particular process only. And um, you know that's that's the basic idea. So we reduce our um, security um, you know, footprint. Uh, it turned out that it's not that straightforward. Um, simply just say mount and give it a path and you know be done with uh, the fact is that um, the API is, is actually much more complicated it has a lot of options and as you would imagine these options are uh, are not necessarily always compatible with one another so you have to really choose your strategy so uh, a lot of cycles were spent in trying to understand not just how mount behaves with the different options, but what it, what it is that really works for us, right? Um, and this is not as straightforward as, as people might imagine, because depending on um, the available uh, you know resources that you have or the uh, capabilities that you have in, in, in your API, um, and depending on how you want to set up your uh, your jail, you need to find the best combination, and that's that's that was a challenge, um, uh, the first challenge. At least. The second challenge is that you actually can't do a single call and get exactly the picture that you need. So as you can see, we ended up doing three different calls. Um, the first two are absolutely um, uh, required because uh, when you're doing a bind. You cannot also enable read-only. Read-only has to be a modification um, that you have to do as a second call with a remount flag, and then you can say, "I, I want this to be read-only, and I, I don't want um, uh, access time um, and you know no SUID and, and all the uh, the rest of it." Right. So you have to do this in two steps. But it turned out even that is not um, enough, as you as we will see in a minute or two. Um, we really had to do a third call, which um, which says, don't bind this uh, directory, this mount, again. And we needed this because we actually had to mount within the mount, right? And we didn't want this to become a, a recursive uh, problem. And, and these were, as you can imagine, um, uh, cases that, that actually were found during 
testing and during development. So, uh, what are what are the real challenges with using mount? I mean, so far I think it sounds like you know this is the silver bullet. You, you just you just mount. Okay, fine. You need to pull the API three times, but once you you do it, you're done. In reality, it turned out that that was not um, the case at all. It's not that straightforward. Um, the main problem is that uh, when uh, when we do the uh, the mount, uh, we actually need to modify the mounted directory. Right? Remember that uh, when we're doing the the, the, the sys template um, copy, we can we can create new directories there. We can create um, you know, a writable temp directory. We can do all sorts of modifications after the fact. Even if we link the files, we still have a new directory that we're playing with. But with uh, mounting, um, you're sharing the system. So your first obvious problem is if you're sharing um, a directory across all the jails. Well, that's a security hole. So system that must become read only after. Um, mounting the jail. So the jail itself has to be read only and, and you saw that in the previous slide that we were indeed um, mounting it read only. But that raises new challenges because now we have to uh, struggle with the fact that we need to create a writable home and a writable temp directories. Um, and on top of that we, we actually need to um, uh, update some files and those files are typically the network related files because if, if the network config files change on the real system uh, you don't want to force your um, uh, clients and partners to um, uh, restart your, your uh, daemon uh, worse uh, you know uh, ask them to shut down the daemon and reinstall uh, I mean that, that wouldn't uh, fly at all right so you need to actually do something um, at runtime, you, you, the next time you uh, spawn a jail, uh, you need to be able to update these files, and that is a very serious challenge, um, especially if system template becomes vegan, right? If system template is still writable, then you can update system template, and the next time you mount from it, your files will be up to date. Um, and as we will see, you know that that was actually another challenge that we had to deal with after all of this work. Was, was actually completed and done. Um, another challenge is that mounting can fail or might not be available or might not you know, be available in, in, in all the options that we need depending on the system, the kernel, the patch. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a complex world out there and we have to be ready for fallbacks. Um, on top of that, uh, we obviously allow our um, sysadmins to be able to disable this in the event that they see some problem with it. Um, and so this is configurable. It doesn't, you know, it, it is enabled by default. And the only reason we enable it by default is because we are uh, confident in our fallback logic. Um, but once it is, um, it, it fails or it is disabled, we have to do the fallback. And the fallback is really just to link and copy files. Um, but now you have another problem, which is if you try to unmount, um, you know, a directory that was really copied. Uh, well, f first of all, that's going to fail, but, but that's not a problem. Um, but you will leak a lot of files in, in the megabytes and in the gigabytes uh, per document on the file system, and, and soon enough you're going to get a call from an angry um, sysadmin uh, complaining that that the, the disk is being called by our um, product. Uh, so we need to differentiate between you know what is mounted and what was copied, so that the copied stuff we can um, delete, but the mounted ones we unmount. Um, and obviously, if you try to delete a mounted directory that isn't read-only, you end up destroying your sys template, right? And you've essentially destroyed your installation. So um, this isn't completely straightforward as one would imagine. So with all of that. You know, um, on the table, we had to come up with a new strategy, and the, and the idea of the new strategy is um, that we need a end-to-end uh, -end approach that would really get everything working as expected. Uh, the first thing is that we need to make sure that the sys template itself is created with the provision that it 
actually uh, might be mounted as opposed to copy, right? The copies are straightforward or the links, um, but mounting has to have a special setup, especially if this template becomes read only. Um, and again, I'm going to return to that briefly at the end. Um, another thing is um, that uh, we really need to make sure that the um, random devices uh, are set up properly. If you mount read only and then you try to create um, the random nodes within the uh, mounted read only uh, path to jail, um, it, it won't work. So uh, a trick that that um, uh, that we came up with is to use the temporary directory, which is writable, um, and we create uh, uh, links, sim links, to the temporary directory that don't exist. Um, uh, I will very briefly go back to the screenshot here, and you can see that the, the dev random and the dev u random are actually sim links to non-existing, you know, um, temporary path, which is a, a relative path. Um, this temporary directory is going to be created in the jail, as we will see, um, but doesn't exist in the system template, right? So this is a, a, a trick that, that, that we use um, to, to um, overcome this, this challenge. So the basic idea is um, we split this into um, really four parts. System template setup script does the, the basic uh, setup of the system template directory. Um, LoopWSD, which is the main daemon, is responsible for uh, figuring out if mounting is enabled and is possible. So we do a test mount, um, and based on that, we actually enable or disable mounting. Um, and then Forkit, which is the, the middleware that is responsible for spawning these uh, uh, background low-kit processes and setting up their jails, um, is responsible for um, uh, updating system if it is writable. And also, it's responsible for doing the cleanup. It's the main cleanup um, logic because that's where we do the spawning and, and where we make sure that we have extra processes in the background. Um, the kit, though, is the one that does the heavy lifting. That's the low kit process that is hosting um, the documents themselves. And that's, that's where um, the, the um, rubber meets the road, so to speak. This is um, where we talk about what the kit is, is doing when it's trying to set up a jail. Um, when the process, the kit process is, is being started up, um, it is responsible for making sure that its jail is, is set up properly. And what it does is first it checks if mounting is enabled, um, because it could be disabled as, as we've already discussed. If it is enabled, first it mounts the system, right? That's your root um, of your jail. Within that, it needs to mount the ELO template, which is the LibreOffice uh, installation, um, and make it read-only as well. And then it needs to create um, a temporary directory um, that is writable, but is created uh, with a cryptographically random uh, uh, path. Um, and then we bind mount that within the, 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 the jail path. Okay. So the visual, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, of this is that the sys template becomes your um, your root uh, in a new path that's jail. Uh, within it, you have the elbow template, and within it, you have the uh, temp directory. Okay, that's the that's the basic structure. Sheet. So you have three um, three mounts really, um, two of them within one another, and this is why uh, you would remember that we had to remount uh, with unbindable because when we do um, when we do a mount, we need to do a remount to make it read-only. And remount can actually uh, pull the other mount points with it, duplicating them. And you, you don't want that. Um, so again, there are technical details here that, that were very carefully managed. Um, after all of this is, 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 is you know, successful, then we can move on um, to creating the random devices in the temp. Uh, but if we fail any of the above mount steps, then we have to do the copying or the linking pullback. Um, once we are done with, um, you know, doing the random devices as well, we create the environment variables and um, and we're done. That's that's the final step and, and ultimately it costs us three um, logical mounts and each mount really is three system calls. So there are nine system calls um, to set up a gate um, with this approach. 
Um, so, um, and this is this is my last slide before I, I go to um, questions. Um, after we were done with all of this, um, we weren't done. Uh, first of all, uh, this template was uh, being requested to become owned by Root by um, really nervous sysadmins um, who really wanted to make sure that there was absolutely no way to hack uh, into the, 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 the template uh, uh, directory which uh, is used for all of the documents. Uh, so that meant that we can't really you know, update the system for post installation. So we had to um, really work very carefully with the Dynamics network files that, that might need updating, um, and we had to rework a lot of that logic. We added logic to um, um, detect if these files are up to, uh, up to date or not. Um, we, we linked to them at the uh, installation time, but that link might actually fail. So there was a lot of special casing to get this um, work. Um, another major challenge was, um, as I um, had in my slides at the very beginning, is that we have multiple flavors of online, right? So we have uh, deployments on mobile uh, that have special uh, builds, uh, and we have app image, and we have Docker installations, and and depending on where um, uh, and how this the, uh, the the code is built, you get different flavors and different um, combinations. Um, app image and mobile in particular, they don't really have sys template and, and they don't use um, change root. Uh, so it's a special case and you can't do a lot of the things that we, that we do here and you need to handle them um, uh, in a very special way. Um, but all of that, you know, done and, and all the special uh, cases and corner cases handled correctly, um, everything really works uh, uh, very well. The performance is fantastic because you, you always are doing, at most, um, these nine system calls unless you have to fall back, um, which um, should happen very rarely. And so your performance, regardless of you know where, whether you're running in a Docker or even in a, a spinning um, disk, um, will be milliseconds per um, jail. Um, and with that, uh, I'm happy to take your questions in the remaining few minutes. Thank you. Ash? Uh, I'm Gabriel from One and One. Hey, hey. Uh, so I, um, I wanted to ask you something. So uh, uh, I know when I, uh, when you start the uh, a container from the Docker image that contains the online application, you have that, uh, uh, let's say, time-consuming hard linking, right? Yes. And this bound linting solves that issue? Completely. Indeed. Because because previously you needed to um, make uh, as many system calls as you have uh, files. And the problem there that each one is really slow, whereas the mount you're, you're really doing only nine at most. Um, and even if each one is, is on the order of, um, you know, let's say 50 milliseconds, which is extremely slow, um, you, you're still going to be you know, under half a second for the whole thing. So the performance should be amazing, right? That is the, the promise, that's the expectation. And unless you know, we find a case in, in the wild that, that has some performance issue, which, which we should address, obviously, um, we expect this to um, resolve the problem for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so, well, uh, for that uh, problem, I, at some point, I found uh, uh, how to solve that, but not through mounting, in mounting. Uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was an issue related to the overlay system, file system. Right. Um, and and, and I, I would imagine others to have similar setups and, and again depending yes. on how, how you're and I, setting it up. Yeah. And I saw that just by copying those folders once again. I mean uh, when the containers, uh, the last layer, uh, the containers layer is created. Yeah. Uh, uh, when the container starts, uh, you just need to copy again those uh, folder system plate and load template 
and that solved the, the issue. I think I discussed this already with Tim and Andras. Very good. Ha happy, I, happy I don't know if they that. shared that uh, idea with you. Um, um, can can I can I stop you stop you both so we you know we want to respect the people that are behind you in their their talk. Yes, now. indeed. But, They're out of uh, time. If you wouldn't